Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna have quite the chill video because a pretty rare and extraordinary event happened last night. We went clubbing. Now, that's all fun, but as you grow old, progressively snapping out of it the second day becomes harder and harder. So today, I need everybody to be calm and quiet. I need to appease the little bendy monster. Need some vitamins, some fluids, some chilling out. Thank goodness I finished Christmas cleaning last week. Anyway, so today we're gonna talk about flower spikes, flowers, and this is because recently I did have a few comments asking me how many orchids do I currently have in spike or in bloom? How can you actually have a collection which will always, every month, give you at least a flower? I was also talking to one of my oldest subscribers about making flower spikes videos and the fact that I actually don't. So we're gonna take a look at almost all of the orchids that I have in spike right now. I'm gonna take it as a therapeutic Saturday. And to answer to one of your questions, how many orchids I have in bloom or spike at the moment, I think I have around 60, 65 or 70. Yep, but before you go all excited and wonder where do I have all of these and why don't I fill them, let's all calm down and take a deep breath because half of them are the Phalaenopsis, it's their season. So I did actually film each and every spike almost in a video, which is this one on the screen right now. So if you do want to see each Phalaenopsis spike that I have, check that video. I'm not going to film them today. I'm going to focus on the other ones because I do have quite some exciting flower spikes, some interesting things to tell you about particular genre of orchids or hybrids or things of the sorts. So with that said, let us start with, I think, this shelf. We're gonna start with this shelf, take it orderly, and what you see in front of you right now is the beautiful, uh, I don't know what it is, Miltonidium bragera, I don't like that name, Oncidopsis, it's not registered, so I don't know the parentage exactly, but it is an Oncidium intergeneric, aka Cambria, here in Europe, Cheyenne. So because it's not registered, I have no idea about the parentage, but I can tell you one thing, she hated, absolutely hated Leka. She does really, really like moss, but I did talk about her quite a lot during the past month because uh, she's red and I just love red and orange flowers, generally, not necessarily only orchids. Next to this one, I have my little Dendrobium Cuthbertsoni, which might be a hybrid because somebody in the comments pointed out that it's kind of tall to be a pure Cuthbertsoni, so I'm not entirely sure. It's a new acquisition, but look at this. It has developed a little bud here and let me just show it to you. Dendrobiums are quite a funny crowd. They can produce flower spikes or buds along the canes. As you will see, I have many dendrobiums spiking now. This particular one puts out um, buds directly, not flower spikes, from the top of the canes. And I heard they can stay in bloom forever. Not really, but a lot, a lot of time, maybe even a year. The only problem with this particular orchid is that it is a rather cool grower. I have some plans with my cool growers, some experiments. Right now it is cool in my growing environment, so I'm not worried. Uh, the real test will be the summer, but I'm happy we will at least get to see a flower, feature it, film it, talk about it, and fingers crossed I can actually cultivate it properly. Okay, moving on, next to them we have the Paphiopetalum front, and I have to say, there are quite a few of them spiking at the moment, it's like they talked in between them, it's pure coincidence though. So we have the American Hybrid here, which is one of the easiest hybrids you can own, you can find it in flower shops as well, at least here in Europe, and I definitely, definitely recommend it to beginners. Here we have a newer Path, which I purchased this year, this is Paphiopetalum Rosy Dawn, it's a beautiful very light colored Paphiopetalum, but it actually has a bit of yellow to it, or it should. Next to it, down here, we have a Paphiopetalum that I don't know if I should pronounce the name of. Here is the name, just so I can read it in editing and put the name on the screen. There we go. It's a, it's a weird name. To be fully honest, I don't really know how the flower of this one should look like. When I purchased it, the seller didn't have a picture of the end result, so it's going to be a surprise. And again, as far as I know, it doesn't have a proper name. It's just the hybrid name at this point. If you guys know the proper name, the registered, let's say, name of this hybrid, do let me know. Back there, we have the Vipani, which is still in bloom, as you can see. This one, 
he's a stressed little guy and the first bloom he put out being his very first bloom was very very wonky you can see there's the remain of another flower spike here which Paphiopetalums don't do the first flower spike was distorted and the flower was pretty much unrecognizable so I was a little afraid but soon after it produced another flower spike with cool little flowers you guys already know this one from my latest what's in bloom next to it is are you the climber? Yes, this is the climber Paphiopetalum, one of my oldest. I did give a division of this one to Ana Maria and the color is green, it looks like the Maudier. But he is spiking, which is nice, it's the first time for me anyway, although I know uh, what it is. So that's cool. These are two new purchases actually, they arrived with flower spikes, I didn't make them bloom, but anyway, they're still in bloom. A Paphiopetalum that I'm missing the name of because I lost the tag and down below we have the uh, Phalaenopsis Tuartiana variety yellow she did arrive with a flower spike which continued to develop I actually postponed uh, repotting her because of the flower spike but I think I can manage without losing the flower spike I think I can remove the moss gently from the root system um, so these ones I didn't make them bloom but they will nonetheless be in bloom here we have some new acquisitions let's just go through them really fast this is the Phalaenopsis yen Schweiss, okay let's just call her sweet girl, shiny girl, she's supposed to be a white and yellow one, really exciting, she has a flower spike, this is another new acquisition, these are the files from my birthday, I did repot these ones, this is a, oh again with the long names, it's a hybrid again, let me just show you the tag and I think you can pause the video to see the name. Back there we have a recovering Phalaenopsis, she is spiking though, it's one of those novelties and novelties are actually a little bit more finicky than the, let's call it the Phalaenopsis subgenus. The Polychylus, mm, they're not so robust in my opinion. This is the Phalaenopsis Sogo grape, the red one, it's beautiful, but she needs a little babying. She put out two leaves which are pretty tiny, but what she did afterwards is to create this massive root system, so she's good, the next leaves will be okay. She's a little dusty, sorry about that. In the back we can see the Bellina and the Violacea just losing their last flower for the season. They have been in bloom until December in my climate. These are hot growers, so you can imagine how warm the autumn has been here. In front we have the Ceratostylus rubra with a tiny flower here. I think, I'm not sure about this because she looks very alien to me, but I think it's the very first flower spike she produces. So we have a tiny orange flower here which is just lovely, has no fragrance. And the flowers appear to arise from the crown of a growth, although this is a sympodial orchid, it has a rhizome. It looks like it's a monopodial, but it's not. When it gets more bushy, you will be able to see the rhizomes on top of each other, um, maybe similar to Maxillaria tenifolia. And I, I think, I'm not sure, I think in the back we have two more buds. One here, and you cannot really see that. There you can see it better now, this is a new growth, but here I believe it's a bud and down here maybe another bud. The bud is covered in dried sheaths, which is very interesting. And you can imagine as the orchid grows and becomes bushier, it's gonna be covered in tiny orange little flowers. I really really like it and it's an easy grower, I will definitely include her in Species for Beginners. There's the fly eagle right there with two flower spikes, but this one will bloom in almost summer, I believe. She's a summer bloomer, she just started to create spikes now because she's a hybrid. Also I have the Ludemaniana in spike here, but again she will bloom next summer, I believe. What else do I have here? Oh, interestingly enough, the Phalaenopsis amabilis, which is a variegated variety, has a variegated flower spike. The flowers are white, but can you imagine if the flowers were a different color, they would be maybe variegated? Uh, what's interesting about the circuit is that the roots can be quote unquote variegated as well. Some roots um, are able to photosynthesize and they're green. They also have the anthocyanin pigment, but some roots I believe cannot photosynthesize. They only have the anthocyanin pigment and they're pink, magenta, bright, beautiful. I had one of them, but it just went in the medium and I don't think I have another one. The roots are really white with a very vibrant magenta tip, it's just lovely. Next to it here we have the golden peacock, I think this is a Brassolalio, hmm, I'm not sure it changed names, my tag says Brassolalia golden peacock but I'm sure the name has been changed. She has just opened up, 
There we have the Aeranthus grandiflora with her flower spike. I already showed you this one. Did you create another one? I don't think so. I think I'll only have one flower spike. But this orchid is a sequential bloomer. An article say that even if the flower spike looks dead, it's probably not dead and leave it alone. I'm curious what that means because to me it seems really easy to tell the difference between a dried flower spike and a live one, but I'm curious how this one will look. And next to it we have the Diana Dunn which has been in bloom and is currently just losing her flowers. Up there we have the Sea of Phalaenopsis orchid kids which all of them are in bloom actually no in spike and I think in that video we counted 35 or something so yeah that's why I'm saying I have like 70 orchids spiking right now half of them are fouls don't worry it's gonna look great when they're in bloom though by the way an answer to the question of how to have orchids always in bloom or have no month without a bloom well either you have a great variety of orchids such as i do either you have many many phalaenopsis a big collection of phalaenopsis because these orchids can be sequential bloomers at least up to a point you can have secondary spikes you can have the main flower spike continuing blooming you can have a phalaenopsis in bloom pretty much up to a year maybe even more i think i managed to have one in bloom for about a year with new flowers of course and if you really want to make sure you will have blooms all the time but you want to stick to fowls get yourself some novelties some polychylus uh, genus meaning the summer blooming ones such as the bellina violacea they're hybrids you'll have them in bloom during summer and in the winter and uh, spring you will have the other ones in bloom and hey presto you don't need big variety when you have phalaenopsis on this table we have the angraecums which are kind of big and i have some issues putting them somewhere where it's still bright and here at some point the sun shines so it's okay until spring we have the sesquipedale with his spike here and also we have the vici in the back the vici is a little more advanced i already see two buds I don't see the buds forming yet on the Sescapidale. I hope he's okay. I think he's okay. Anyway, so yeah, these guys are in spike as well. I actually have the Ladysia in bloom, uh, not in bloom, in spike or in bud right now as well. Most of its um, stems, let's say, are producing buds and it's going to be really fun to see how this display will look like when in bloom. Currently I love it, pendant like this and there's always new growth from the top but yeah I hope it's gonna look good when it's in bloom as well. Somehow this little side of my shelf became a working table which is not nice. I need to be more tidy but I'm a little bit tired right now so probably I'll tend for the greenhouse after the holidays. Uh, so here we have the experiment twinkles, they're in spike actually. This is a suspicious orchid, sadly. She has some rotting going on that I just noticed. This is my yellow bird, which has never done particularly good for me, which is weird. She's a robust plant, typically. Uh, I hope she's okay, but I think I need to intervene and remove um, the rotting leaves and rotting pseudobulbs altogether because this is a pretty serious problem here, sadly. Um, she was just putting out some buds, some flowers here and there. Um, but yeah, I need to see if she's okay. That's why she's sitting separate at the moment. Uh, let's tackle the cattleyas now. So I showed you in a previous video this orchid, it's my Brassavola hybrid, which I hope will be a sort of orange Brassavola, but I don't know, we'll see. I also have my Cycnotus Wine Delight in bloom right now, and the fragrance is intoxicating. I just love this guy. But, uh, as I was saying in my video with success and fails of 2018, the catacetums were not very successful for me this year. I kind of messed them up. Luckily, with these types of orchids, you can always start fresh because they kind of take a sort of reset during winter time. Here's my cat, Leah Mosier. She has a really nice sheath, but this one usually waits until spring to bloom. Sadly, you remember the storm? This was one of the orchids that completely fell out of her pot or actually together with her pot and the leaf is completely not completely but it's kind of ruined uh, i lost a few roots luckily though the new roots were just growing on this one so i don't think i'll have a lot of setback i hope she will bloom right now there's nothing in the sheath but usually in spring she blooms in the back there we have one of my favorites this is the bc maikai she has a nice little spike with buds 
Moving up here, we have the Catlia Hawaiian Splash Leia. This one does not produce a sheath, uh, but I can definitely feel the buds inside. Next to it, we have the Synchorana Hybrid with the Boo Lady. Again, this one doesn't have a proper name. She has three little buds here. And in the back there, let me get you here. This is the Dendrobium Berry Oda just growing his flower spikes. This is a type of Dendrobium which produces flower spikes and the buds form on the flower spike and the spikes can arise from the top of the canes or from somewhere on the upper notes just below the leaves. This is the Cattleya Sun May Gold which you guys already seen in my What's in Bloom video for last month. Above it, we have the Brassavola nodosa, the pure nodosa, blooming for the very first time for me. She's lovely, uh, but she doesn't have fragrance at night, which is weird, but it's her first bloom, so maybe she's gonna snap out of it. But yeah, a Brassavola, which is not fragrant. Oh my. In the back there, oh, I think I need to move my ladder. Alrighty, in the back there, we have Dendrobium glomeratum or Sulawesi crossed with Lawesi. It has two inflorescences. This is a type of Dendrobium which produces buds along the cane, but each note can produce multiple buds. I think I have three or four or maybe more there. I'm not entirely sure. So I have one there and I also have a bud developing here. This is a rather cool growing orchid. So I'm kind of surprised I have to say. This is a no ID cat layout that I got from my mom. It's so hard to film her. She's that really nice red purple um, color which is very hard to film. The camera perceives it as something else. In reality it's a little darker than this but I don't know how to film it. She is so fragrant. She has kind of big flowers as you can see. She smells like roses combined with a little citrus. Typical cat layout fragrance but really really beautiful nonetheless. And then, oh, I need to get these guys out because I'm so happy about these. Hold on. Alrighty, I'm seriously, seriously happy about these. This is the Renanthera Monachica. She has a little flower spike there and I need to water it. She's so dry. Good thing I'm filming this video. And here, guess what we have here? This is, I forgot her name. <laughs> This is Renanthopsis Mildred Jameson. And look at that. Look at the flower spike. I love this one. I had it before, it died on me. I had the Renanthera Monachica, it died on me. I thought they were finicky, but nope. I just had some bad luck with some bad individuals. These guys will bloom, I think, in February. Then here we have the Dendrobium Compactum, actually, Bijibum Compactum. He produces flower spikes, very similar to the Dendrobium Phalaenopsis or Bijibum types, the hybrids. Um, this is a Compactum variety. He's full of buds, but he's an easy grower. And now comes the funny part. How do I film these guys? I am actually at the top of my ladder. We have the twinkles and I cannot really see their tags. I have the yellow, the um, sepia color and the cinnamon twinkles. The rosy one died sadly, oh well. So this one is the yellow one actually because I recognize the tag. Here I have the Sotoanum, which is the species, blooming for the very first time. Not the best of spikes, but it's a first time bloomer. Then we have another twinkle there. Then we have another twinkle here and I don't see their tags. I think I lost them, so I don't know what they're gonna be, but definitely one of these colors. Then next to the twinkles, we have the Miltonia Yellow, which is a no ID. I recently repotted her in moss because I didn't really like how she was doing in Lekka. She is putting out two flowers, not a whole lot, but it's okay. Back there is a deciduous orchid. It's a Harrisoniana something, which is not in bloom at the moment, but yeah, that's why the leaf there. Also back there, can I actually film the flower spike? I'm not sure if I'm properly focused because I do not see the viewfinder at this angle, so let me return you. That, my friends, is an Oncidium pupacea, and I have two of them with spikes. That's one of them. And this is the second, look at that. One of them is kind of pink, one of them is kind of yellow. Both of them have two flower spikes, actually. They're just a little hard to film. Alrighty, maybe this angle is a little better. All of these will be moved to moss, actually. I'm not very happy with Leka and Oncidiums generally. They dehydrate way too fast. 
There I have a lot of Oncidiums, uh, be them Redolence, be them Sherry Baby, and these two pseudobulbs have just matured. They're really nice, they might actually bloom, but I did not take them out to see if they have flower spikes just yet. They might, I'm not sure. Here's my Sherry Baby, still in bloom, smelling so, so, so nice. And to be fully honest, I'm not sure if I have any spikes here, I didn't check. I should get them down, do a flush, check them out see if there's any flower spike caught in the leaves but yeah i'm not sure what's going on here it's a little bit crowded okay decided to be brave and film these guys from the ladder as well which maybe it's not a good idea because i have height sickness Ugh. anyway so here we have the gold digger which i think is just starting to form something in that sheath can you see something at the base are you focused yeah i think it finally has buds then we have the raychara where where are you <laughs> Oh, there she is. Alrighty, so here we have the Raychara, she's growing a flower spike. In the back there we have the purple cascade, she has obviously a flower spike here, but check this out. She has buds in this sheath as well. How about that? I'm really happy about it actually, because it's one of those full of history catlians actually. Moving lower on this shelf, here we have the Styria japonica crossed with Vendopsis parishi. I showed you this one already, she has a flower spike there and I do believe... Oh, how do I film this? She has another flower spike here, can you guys see that? So I believe she does have... To... Oh, oh my goodness, the microphone got tangled in this orchid and oh, that scared me. She's already recovering, I don't need her to be stressed. Once again, there we have the Ivanagara. She has a sheath, but no flower spikes just yet. Here we have the Epidendrums, which are just maturing now. And the yellow one has a sh sheath, I guess, a flower spike forming here. Up here, well, up here we actually have the surprise of the month. This is a Catlia, a No ID Catlia, which I saved a year and a half ago from the flower shop. The story was they had Catlias, but I didn't catch them, I didn't see them. And when I went to the flower shop, all of them were out of bloom, they were all pushed under a bench somewhere, and they were not discounted, they did not want to discount them at all. And they were all pretty much suffering and they weren't looking happy. So because they weren't discounted, it was 15 euros actually per Catlia, I thought, okay, I cannot save all of them, there were about 4 or 5, but I can save one at least, so I saved this one. And um, she has three directions of growth, she has buds here, buds there, or flowers already, she has three there, three here, and she smells really nice like lilies, and yeah, look at that. Very nice thank you gift, let's say, I love this orchid. Um, in the back there we have the flamethrower, what are you? Epicatlia flamethrower. I have a sheath here, this one blooms from top of the canes, and a sheath which is pretty solid there. And here we have a sheath on the Catlia, formerly known as Lelia uh, purpurata. This one blooms in the spring and holds on to her sheath, so it's gonna take a while. Let's move on. Here we have some more buds, and you cannot see it. We have some more buds from another Catlia, this is CMJ. She was very sick, no roots at some point, Finally, she's recovering. This is her first time blooming for me, but you can see the buds are now very spectacular. It is to be expected. Here we had the little stars in bloom just fading now, and I don't know if I have anything in bloom there. I don't think so, and it's hard to just get in there. Let's look at the vandas now. <laughs> so, here we have a new addition. I cannot take credit for this spike, but it was very tiny when I got it. This is a Gigantia spot. It's gonna be really, really pretty. And here we have the old blue Vanda, she has a flower spike there. Vandas are just recovering now, let's just film the dendrobiums now, I need to clean up. <laughs> This is a mess here, but anyway, the dendrobiums are reblooming, the ones that lost their flower spikes and a few others. <laughs> this is the banana chocolate, he decided he wants to bloom again, that's fine with me. This is the polar fire, he decided to put on two flower spikes, which again is fine by me. And I think I saw another one from the blue happiness. Oh yeah, look at the blue happiness. He's growing something there. Um, by the way, the yellow leaves, somebody asked me why do yellow leaves happen on dendrobium phalaenopsis types? And well, depends. This guy has new green leaves. These are very, very old leaves. 
maybe two years and a half, three at this, not three, two years and a half. If they're old leaves, they're okay to fall. For me, they always kind of fall. It's the new leaves that you don't want to lose. If you lose new leaves, it might be a hydration issue most of the times. But of course, check for pests, check for um, proper nutrition, uh, bacterial infections and things of the sorts. They are sensitive when it comes to their leaves. But if you lose old leaves such as these, it's pretty okay. Actually, we have another dendrobium fowl. This is one that has whitish flowers with pinkish lip. Up here, we are finally losing the flowers on the Celestis Blue. She was so pretty, but everything comes to an end. Not to worry, we have the Rinko Rita's Bangkok Sunset with her flower spike. And we're approaching the end of this tour with the Dendrobium Nobilis. As I was saying in my video regarding Dendrobiums, my Nobilis are a little confused as to what season it is right now. So some of them are more advanced than others. This is the Aurora. Um, I don't know. Oh, I, I detect a little nub in here. He might bloom, but I don't know. Here we have a yellow one, which does have buds. So you can see here on this cane and on this cane, he's producing buds. With the Akatsuki again, I detect some nubbins, but he might be late this season. Then this is a newer one. I forget the color. I forget the name. I forget what I had. This one has buds. This one has buds as well. And there's the older one, the angel I see again having buds. Here we have a few more Phalaenopsis having flower spikes and buds, but they're newer to my collection. And I think that's about it. So if you will, do take this video as motivational. I had a lot of issues with my orchids after I moved here. I did a lot of mistakes. I didn't anticipate that I would keep them bare rooted on a tarp for three weeks. And that was my mistake. I should have purchased the medium first. I should have made sure that everything was on time. Um, it's hard to do when you're trying to move everything but yeah now i know and for the future i would advise you that if you ever go through a move or a big change make sure that you have everything you need and then go ahead and take the orchids with you because things will always go wrong sometimes so might as well have a backup might as well make sure that your orchids will have everything they need before you go ahead and do something anyway so you know how much i had to like baby them how much i messed up with them and you know in the end they will recover it just takes time so if you did mess up quite a few of your orchids um, it's okay tend for them take it as a learning experience be patient and in the end they will reward you they will bloom and and I do encourage everybody to try out different types of orchids. It's really, really fun. And if you just love Phalaenopsis, you can definitely, definitely have flowers most of the year with fowls. If you don't get bored of them, that is. Sometimes it's, it's easy to get bored of them. But hey, there are so many easy orchids to choose from. So alrighty guys, enough blabbing. Hope you've enjoyed spending your Saturday with me. I hope you have a great weekend and you know the drill. Like or dislike this video below. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects. And if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel. Oh, I'm so awake right now, you guys. I was actually contemplating going to a flower shop this morning, but I woke up so dizzy. I thought, mm, driving might not be the best of ideas, but now I'm feeling up to it. So, where was I? Oh yeah, check the description if you're curious about my setup and the products that I use, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye!